then. All right. Back again, <laughs> hundred in a row. Almost in a row. Well, I've an, I've annoyed Josh with that phrase a hundred times in a row. <laughs> oh, it's all right. Yeah. So this is uh, like about. our third show in a row with no guests. We took a break. You guys probably picked up on this. We were taking a break from guests for a little while. Yeah. John and I wanted to annoy you on our own for a few weeks. So. Mm-hmm. It's true. You're welcome. Yeah, you're very welcome. We'll take thank yous and stuff in private. Right before I came on the show, I was arguing with people online about veganism. Oh, mm-hmm. what about? <clears throat> I didn't see that. Well, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with veganism and the concept behind it, I'm sure. Sure. I would say, aside from politics and religion, veganism is the most contentious subject to discuss with people because they really get upset. Yeah? I haven't really mm-hmm. had too many conversations. You need to dip your toe into that pool. <laughs> Do I? Just start fights with people? Mm-hmm. Do you I just... So. Should I take the opposite of whatever they're feeling about it? Just annoy people or actually what I believe? Uh, I guess that would depend on your mood in the day. Yeah. I like to uh, follow the science for the most part. Oh, okay. And, uh, but, you know, that's only popular with people if the science supports your belief. Don't let, the, fa- don't let the basket in the way of a good, you know, yeah, exactly. argument, you know. Chris Gobby just posted I'm not a carnivore. I'm eating gelatin in these gummies, so I clearly am a carnivore. Yeah. This is made I, from horse toenails, I think which jo- I do feel bad about. <laughs> I think Josh gave me my first uh, M&Ms in like 10 years when I was at your <laughs> house. When we woke up super early to, to broadcast uh, Bowen to versus... Not, to, to not, not broadcast. To not broadcast Bowen versus Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's talk about rumors. Rumors, okay. So I I heard a rumor, and I will not name this, divulge the source of the rumor, but the rumor that I heard is that uh, WAL is planning a huge comeback with the following format, that they have acquired the financial backing of a major television network that is not ESPN and not a sports network Okay, that's providing providing them with uh, some amount of money I don't okay. know how much, and that they're going to return uh, with a super match format, hand-picked athletes. Mm-hmm. At the moment, it doesn't appear that there would be any tournaments to support it because we had talked before about tournaments being right. the uh, judge that decides which people would get sure. super matches. Yep. But I think they're just going to start off with their known superstars. Mm-hmm. So that's a rumor I heard, and that begs a bunch of questions to me. Number one, is that why – well, is the fact that certain people – have been removed from the rankings. In fact, a lot of people have been removed from the rankings. Does that mean they're not going to be in the super matches if this turns out to be true because they went overseas and pulled? And if so, how long will that punishment last for? And two, is it going to make the slightest bit of difference if the arm wrestling community supports this endeavor or not? No. The second part, no. For sure. Mm-hmm. has nothing to do with any, you know, no. No decision in the sport goes with what the 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 masses want um mm. uh yeah i mean most you told me a little bit of that but not all of it um yeah i don't know we'll see i mean listen i want to ask I, you this I, would you I, support them if they came back under that format i can't even most of my support doesn't come from that kind of stuff most of my support comes from you know what what are you looking to do what are we looking to how are we going to improve this whole thing how mm-hmm. what's your long-term stuff mm-hmm. You know, and if, you know WAL. I mean, if it's anybody, that's, if it's any of the same group of people that ran it before, I, no, I have zero trust in it. Mm-hmm. Listen, the first go through for WAL, the, it was WAL Underground. Mm-hmm. It was, it's already Underground, guys. Do we have this little of insight of what's going on? <laughs> you know, so I mean, if it's the same people, then I, I don't have too much hope for it. I would still mm-hmm. be open-minded about it as much as I could be, anyway. Um, if it's just the name WAL, then maybe, 
You have to, you have to see. You have to give people chances. Mm-hmm. Well, what I think about it is, as if they're if that's ac- just assume for just for fun sure. that it is accurate that they have a large network behind them that's going to provide money to guarantee that the events happen. It has a huge chance of success with a super match format because you know that's what led to UFC success when they ditched the uh, tournament format and moved to individual matches. I mean, if it's on air for any reasonable amount of time, if they do sufficiently exciting background. You know, uh, yeah. productions of each person. It could be huge. Yes, I think. I well, I, th- I, 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 if that is where it's going, because um, I mean, it sounds like you know a whole lot more about it than I do, anyway. Um, Super match format is the way to go. It just is. It just it sorts out for. It sorts out at least for the viewer mostly, who the who the real guy is. Tournaments, in a lot of ways, they're fair. In a lot of ways, they're not. Um, mm-hmm. But super match format, it gets down to it pretty quick, and people can cry about format of uh, format of the super match, whether it's best two or three or five, six rounds, eight rounds, whatever. Um, you know, all that becomes about endurance and this and that. Um, but one on one, that's really what the public can grasp onto. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's so. A let me good let me idea. ask you something. Okay. What happens if? During the super match format in the creation of superstars, they do not include people like Michael Todd and Dave Chafee and Travis Vagent. So what? That's um, what I mean. What do you, what do you think happens if what, uh, the people that we know are the best are not even included on the show? Well, it doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't matter. Take the top ten in the world out of the equation, the sport's still fine. It's mm-hmm. really mostly, I mean, to be fair, um, personality and all that kind of stuff as far as TV goes, it doesn't matter but you really have to be able to step up and do something about it too um but really what matters is i mean if you take two guys who are number 10 and number 11 they're gonna be close right yeah it's gonna be an entertaining match it's not you, if you take superstars out of anything you still have a great sport with a, a lot of great competitors it has nothing to do with it um can you argue that it'd be better with um those people you can argue it'd be better with the people on the on uh you know on the other side of it too um, there's arguments for all of it. It'll be interesting if they really want to do that. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Handpicked athletes. That's interesting too. You know, how, how, well, they, how they, hand-pick, uh, how political does that get? Well, my guess would be if it's about money, they're not going to give a crap about anything else. If you were going to pick, say three super matches to create the most amount of excitement amongst people who have never seen the sport before, who could you imagine going up against each other? Well, anybody who can talk, because mm-hmm. people aren't going to give a fuck about the sport mm-hmm. until it's something to care about, and it's not right now. It's nothing to care about. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just such a weird. That's weird, man. Well, I would say Michael Todd and Travis Bajan would both have to be up there. Yeah. Know, in terms of just talking and, char- and charisma, it, it, you know. Now we're starting to get into some other conversations. Of mm-hmm. are we going to give a fuck about sp- rules? Or is right. it going to go the same way the WL was going, which is we don't care about rules? Because if you do care about rules and you do care about all these things, and there's certain people you got to leave out because you're either going to have to foul them out or you're going to have to lie to people's faces. Mm-hmm. It's just the way it, that's just the way it is. We, you know, bring them to worlds and see what happens. A lot of those guys won't finish mm-hmm. because they can't. They can't play within the rules. Um, if they're going to actually go through with that stuff, and again, that all depends on if you're bringing people from the old WL along with you. Um, then it, dep- it it changes a lot because mm-hmm. if you have somebody who can talk pretty well, you have somebody who can pull pretty well, but they're not going to foul themselves out. That guy could be a star because he can actually finish a match. Whereas if you have somebody who just talks a lot and then fouls out every single time, because if this is a lot of money and this is all this and that, like everybody's this rumor is, <laughs> then there's going to be good production on it, which means you're going to be able to see everything. Right. And you can just lie to people, and that usually does work. So I'm not going to go around and saying that you have to follow this strict stuff and this strict stuff because you can you you can just lie to people, and you can lie to arm wrestlers and arm wrestlers will just take yeah it, it looks cool to me fine because it you know if I'm a part of it I can be part of the cool the cool group, and they'll they'll just go along with it they don't care, mm-hmm. but if you really need it to look a certain way, and you kind of do for longevity, then there's a group of people that are going to be very that are very talented and can and can beat anybody on the planet but they can't do it with inside the rules. Mm-hmm. It all depends what the rule book is. Mm-hmm. If it's awful, then they're gonna have 
this is going to open the doors for a lot of people. Yeah. If you were one of the top 10 guys, say, in this country or North America, let's start there, yeah. and WAL called you with this idea, and, you know, say that you've obviously had experience with them in the past, would you join up? Would you just accept that they're telling the truth this time and it's going to work out? I mean, how much would you commit? <laughs> if you were, say, someone like Rob Vigent or Tullier or Todd Hutchings, who's probably contemplating not arm wrestling anymore because he's been doing it for forever. If you're one of those guys, you know, would you be willing to ramp it all back up to 100 again for this type of offer? Uh, well, it would really depend because, you know, this group comes through with all this money in a new format. We've heard it us all before. So uh, you, always have to, you always have to side, go on the side of integrity rather than anything else. And if they were to come through, with these little papers that say, hey, sign this. We got to use your name. We got to use it for a couple years. And we're not going to give you a dime, but it's going to be really cool. Yeah. No. Um, no. And that's not the same answer as most people will give. Mm -hmm. um, if, if they came through and said, here's what we're offering, we want to use your name for a year or two, we want to do this and that, here's the rule set. And we're willing to compensate you this much money per month, per year, per contract, whatever. Right. Then that you'd have to consider it then, mm -hmm. because you know people just giving away their rights for nothing. I just, I just never, I never understood it. But that's me. That's me. Um, so no, it wouldn't just be a absolutely, for sure or not. So much, so much would depend on the human beings behind it, because there's just some of them that you just I can't know. Nope. So now you have the Travis Big Money League potentially competing with the resurgence of the WAL. Yeah. Both of them have some promises of being on a major network. What do you do? I mean, that's it's just interesting. Yeah, no, it's definitely interesting. Um, you're going to get a lot of promises, and there's going to be almost nobody that shows up for most of them. I think. I mm. my prediction, and I mean, and, and that's not to even that's not to even throw any kind of personal stones anywhere because it's really not. It's a fucking small sport in this country, man. And you want to have all these different places you got to go? It doesn't really make a lot of sense. And only you can only go so many places at once. You know, I mean, you're going to run into all types of problems. I, th I think, as personally as a as a uh, as an athlete, you might, you know, I mean, we all know that people go through some pretty. So they the, people sustain damage in the sport. And if mm -hmm. you really want to push it real hard and compete a lot. You're gonna run at risk of uh, shortening your career a little bit, at least for maybe a temporary, you know, time being. If you had to pick one of those two leagues to participate in, which one would you pick? Uh, between Travis's league and WAL. Mm -hmm. Oh Jesus, can I retire? No, I was just about okay. to say retirement's not an option. All right. Uh, new WAL. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh. I'd have to. I don't know, man. That's we horrible. stumped him. We stumped John. It only took a hundred episodes. Yeah, I'm trying not to throw up all of my microphone here. <laughs> uh, may, you know, based on based on what I know and based on what I don't know, I'd have to go WL. I'll tell you my answer. Because I'd rather would be, I would do the Travis one for this reason. Okay. There's a lot of people that I know and respect running events for Travis. Okay. And obviously, I've met Travis and spent time with him and had you know decent experiences with him. I've never had he's never rubbed me the wrong way okay. although I know that there's a lot of people who feel differently about that but the reason I would pick Travis is because like Jonathan Lobb is just posting he's running one James Reed is running one there's a lot of people that I know and trust running them so uh, I would pick one of those and also I'm not I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm gonna make the 25 grand at the end <laughs> no. I'm going to compete for fun yeah so that's my answer. You know, I'm kind of like, you know, there's part of it where I'm happy, you know, that I can't participate for a while. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've said it a couple times and it's like the more that ha more of this bullshit that happens, I'm kind of, you know, it gets it gets more and more to where I kind of feel that way. I'm dying to compete again, but man, sometimes I'm really not in this sport. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just the way that's just the truth of it. Mm -hmm. um, when you told me super match format, I was pretty pissed. I got to be honest because um, if you it, love that, I well, you know. I like both a lot, but I have to. If I have to be honest, I just my I think my skill set goes more towards one on one. Oh, I agree. You know whether I want it to or not, 
right now anyway. Um, mm-hmm. It's just the way it is. So I was like, fuck, super match format. I like that, but you know, yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah, do? I don't know. I mean, uh, I wasn't planning on doing any tournaments until uh, Nationals, but after that, I um, definitely was planning on hitting up the one Lob is doing in New York and Long Island. And I would definitely go to a, a Travis Bajan event or if WAL ran a tournament, you know, to find super match contestants. I would do that, too. I mean, I don't have big money in the game, and I don't have, you know, star power, and I certainly am not one of the ten best in the country. So for me, it's just about... Like you've always said, hanging out with people that I like, supporting people that I like as well, and you know, competing in tournaments that I think are going to be well run, and so I would probably go. And, and plus, I like to see what it's you know what it is in person. And you, we hear a lot of stuff about these kinds of things, and a lot of it's negative. But these are two brand new leagues, and there's the whole you know fool me once. Well, I mean, I'll, t- I'll tell you right now. I think you're going to see. I think you're just going to see a WAL tournament at Travis's, and that's not a, a knock on it. If, if you know, well, a lot of people love those. So yeah, he said he's using those rules. Yeah, so, so I mean, I think true. I think that's what you're going to see. So I mean, in terms of that, I think that's what you're going to see, and that's all right. Uh, the WAL one, there's just so many things that we don't know because it's again, you know, you say it's, it's rumor. Obviously, mm-hmm. it's a little more than that, but um, not that it's I know. It's a rumor I mean, that a, a, a very specific group of people in this country have all heard. That's because they're getting. Wow individual phone calls from steve kaplan you know so it's oh. like it's a rumor that has that a name? fair amount of uh veracity behind it oh, okay, okay. but again you know if you're someone who got burned in vegas what would it take for you to say okay i'm gonna you know <laughs> someone some, whoever it is who's is, not training full speed right now who maybe like decided to step out or is Putting arm wrestle in their rear view mirror, but is, that, is it going to be enough to encourage you? Like Michael Todd, for example. So Mike has basically been posting all of his wife, wife that he's going to you know, stop trying to be a you know, fantastically gigantic human being and yeah. cut down to you know, 240, 220 or whatever. Yep. Would he reconsider that if there was going to be big money, super heavyweight matches? Is that something that he would go back up and do? You know, if you were Michael Todd and you had made this commitment to drop weight, would you just continue to do that and maybe compete with the uh, Devin Lorette's at 225 or what have you? Or would you put the weight back on, you know? I mean, this is decisions that aren't going to impact people's lives relatively significantly. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about it. Um, I just don't think people should try to impact their life super significantly in, in health regard for a few thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. I just don't. I, don't. I don't think it's worth it. But... um again that's you know you do what you want to do but the thing is too you really shouldn't i just man people getting caught up in these promises and stuff what when has it worked guys when has it worked you well know, the first two years of wl it worked right people made a lot of money right and then it like but the first year like the first year okay second year down next mm. year down next year gone you know it's, it's the super match format thing is interesting. It'll be in, well. You, you can't, I can't even make any comments because I don't know shit. Yeah, I've learned more on well, this nobody, show than I knew before this. <laughs> nobody so, I mean, knows shit. It's all like, I mean, even, I think even the people who have spoken to him in person probably don't know anything. I mean, because this is still just talk at this point. Gotcha. Okay. Whereas See, Travis has actually been running events. True. And been right. posting people that are qualifying for the. That, uh, which I actually really. What do you think about the the format for winning the big money? I I really like it. I don't know what it is to be to be it's fair. It's basically he's you know people qualify in the various tournaments and they're matched up by weight, all in the in the same gigantic bracket. The two lightest people start off against each other, the two heaviest people, and it fills out in the middle, and eventually they all come down to a super match mm. at the end mm. um, between whatever two people make it there. That's interesting. All in one day. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's obviously it's still weighted towards the larger people, but at least it uh, people will be equally tired potentially. And if you are a super dominant light person, you might get to the end in a stronger position than someone of you know, heavier weight classes that had some real wars. True. I mean, we've seen things like that happen at California State Championships and the overalls. Yep. A lot of times, a, a light guy ends up winning because the you know, bigger guys are all worn out. Yes, I agree. Uh, yeah, that's interesting for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's all summertime this year. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's I, the, I think it's I think the main event is summertime. I can find the date, but it is that's at a big festival in Arizona or wherever, whatever state it is. Yeah. I don't even know. Gotcha. <clears throat> Rebecca just posted this. No way, Mike is cutting to two twenty. I remember he was at two twenty at USAF Nationals. What was that like? I think three years I, ago? the man, the best Michael Todd I ever saw was the one that pulled Pushkar the first time. I thought he was phenomenal. Yeah. Great shape. You know, I, if I had to guess, I don't know for sure. I'm sure Rebecca does know. Probably 260. You know, pretty pretty damn lean, strong, big, fast, good endurance. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, he just looked so good there. Mm-hmm. Um, that whole bigger is, is stronger thing. I don't know. I just don't know. Some people, I mean, I think people get to a certain point with the bigger, you know, the heavier, stronger thing. And I think after that, it's not so much beneficial anymore, especially if you have a certain style that requires a lot of longevity. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was, I think that, you know, I think that was the best mic I've ever seen in every way, in every way. Yeah, Nick Hawk says big big guys always have room to lose weight. And that's true. Well, for the most part, there's some big guys that are pretty damn trim. But in general, most of them do have. It's easier for them to be flexible with weight than sure. most of us. Yeah. Rebecca said he was two fifty eight when he pulled Fushkar the first time. Two fifty eight, right? Yeah. So yeah, to me that 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 guy looked. That's his best weight, you think? I I think so, because I think I think in every way. And if you want to talk about the WAL and TV and all these other things, mostly just TV. Um, you know, people want to look a certain way too, right? So. You know. I think he, you know, that 260 pound super heavyweight champ that's in great shape, um, has great endurance, fast, super strong, and you just look at, you know, you just look at him and you're like, and your average guy looks at that and goes, yeah, that's that guy's a like a super athlete, right? And not to say that people don't look at, you know, 300 pound athletes that way too, but when you're 260 pounds, you basically have abs too. Right. People look at that differently. They just do. And if you put it on TV, people are going to see a, a different product. Um, I don't know if that's important to them or not. It doesn't have to be for sure. But I think just in every single way, that was the best package if you could, you could find. The guy who was pretty much strong enough to beat anybody and, uh, you know, and looked like a really like an impressive athlete as well. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I think there's so many athletes in the sport that train to an elite level. And uh, it's important that people, even if they see it as a superficial level, it's kind of, you know, this, to see it and recognize it, it's kind of cool. I agree. I think it would be fun to see Mike at that weight, see what he would do. Um, I don't think you'd see any kind of power difference at all from 310-pound <coughs> Michael Todd to 260-pound Michael Todd. I think it's the same power. I really do. Maybe not in the gym, but – you know, to be to be honest, I don't. I don't it, that doesn't seem to translate so much. It just doesn't. Mm-hmm. Maybe confidence-wise, it does, but nothing else. Mm-hmm. Do you see? You've seen the pictures of Devin lately. Do you think he's going to stay at a higher weight, or do you think he's going to cut back down? Devin, you said. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. The thing is, Devin. I don't. I don't think he's all that big. To be honest with you. He looked pretty big. He looked like he was in the 240, 250 range to me. That picture, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I don't know how you know real that was. To be honest, I think it might. I don't know. I'm just saying. You think he just ran into a bunch of bees? <laughs> I could have. Um, it was an anaphylaxis but, shock. Uh, but I <laughs> I think Devin's a one month of eating, you know, of just watching his diet a bit from being from to 235. And yeah. Then 235 to 225 is you know. Speaking of Devin, what happened to Freedom Arm Wrestling? Anybody hear anything about that lately? Because I haven't heard a goddamn thing about it. I haven't it. heard shit. Um, what happened to Freedom Arm Wrestling? I don't know. Where's Devin? I want to know answers to these questions. Yeah, what the hell, Devin? Jesus. Do you do you know, have you spoken to anyone who's actually done a Freedom Arm Wrestling term? I know they did one. I saw a video of it. It looked totally insane. I have not. I wouldn't mind trying it just so I could have actually have a. Um a real viewpoint it looked on it. like a uh, ring around the rosy a little bit like. a little bit nobody was actually singing the song but well you don't know i mean um you know from what i saw you know obviously the all the concerns of injury um are there but really it's like you know i'm an experienced armor so i'm not going to break my arm no but you might tear your your shoulder from your body you know those kind of th- that's, those are the positions i saw where it's like man i don't think there's a lot of guys that are that flexible 
Um, but that would also limit how they move on the table. So it's you know I like I I wouldn't mind trying it and just playing around just to kind of see what, fun to what's try. this try feel you know sure. what does this feel like you know what I mean just to play. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I I, I I haven't heard anything about it. So Chris Gobby said he pulled in his only freedom event. How did you do, Chris? Are we going to have people call in and talk to us or what? I don't care. Let's do it. I don't want the number, though. The number is just all because it's all it's going to do is ring. Because <laughs> while we have somebody on it, it'll keep ringing. I'm not doing that. Hell no. If somebody wants to come on and talk about some of this shit, just let us know. Yeah. What do you think about Leonard's uh, pad? The, the Leonard new yeah. elbow pad, I think, is great because I think it'll stop some inconsequential elbow fouls from being called, which should stop slowing down a bunch of the matches. Mm. I don't see any downsides to it. Like, if you assume that as long as you cannot see an elbow jump on that whatever it is, quarter inch or half inch little corner, yeah. that's an addition. That's, you know, however many elbow, what percentage of elbow fouls are that small, which is a significant amount of them. Right. Won't, won't be called anymore, so that will speed up. And those those little tiny elbow fouls, as we know, have no bearing on the match whatsoever, or so such a small bearing that it's they're not it's not worth calling. Mm. Um, Jonathan, there's no way we're giving the number out because you will all call it once. Yeah, we did we that call. once by mistake. Remember when I can't remember? I think it was actually the the show that when the WL canceled. And you put it and in Robert the feed. Call. You Robert Drenko. Robert Drenko. You put it in the feed and. <laughs> Alan Fisher called first, and it's like, okay, I'll talk to Alan. And then, and then Drank called. I'm like, what? Why am I talking to Robert Drank all of a sudden? And then we get off the show, and I get, I sign the Skype the next week, and there must have been 20 missed calls. That's my personal number, guys. It's not the oh, show number. Actually, let's put that number in now. That he's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet you want to. But um, message us if you have something to say. Message us, and we'll put you on. But because um, it is episode 100, this is like everybody's welcome. But we're not giving out John's number, I guess. He's like a superstar now, celebrity, high level type guy. Listen, he doesn't want it all looks of like the to me, Poloi having his number. It looks like to me that there's 22 people watching. I don't need, I don't want or need 22. Yeah, but phone there calls. are 22 amazing people, all of whom know what Hoy Poloi is. Okay, well, right? I, I don't. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, back on topic that I took, that I brought up, Leonard's yeah, bad. Right. Uh, I have mixed feelings about it. Just because, you know, if there's a foul that happens, it's nice to see it. Um, are those half-inch fouls inconsequential? I, I kind of think so. Um, I really want to see the real-life data. Because in my opinion, if you call the same amount of fouls with those pads, or you call no fouls with those pads, either one of those, is there's no need to mm. have it. Because if you're calling no fouls during a tournament because of these pads, that means that it's covering up a problem. A problem. It's not fixing a problem. It's covering one up because we all know that there's going to be a foul during the tournament, right? It's the way it is. So if you have no fouls because of a pad, it's just something that makes it so you can't see it if you're a ref. Mm -hmm. Just because I put a piece of black tape over my check engine light doesn't mean my check engine light's on. It's not <laughs> on, right? But if it's if it results in less fouls, then I think we have something going. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's the the goal. Should well, be don't less you fouls, think it will fouls. result in less fouls? I, I hope so. I don't think it's going to re result in less fouls off the side, front, and back. I don't. Um, it could, but I don't. I don't think so. And I don't think so because I think that – I don't think people are going to feel that ridge in the heat of adrenaline-filled match. You know what I mean? I just don't – I don't know. I don't know if people have that awareness just because I don't think you can. Um, because people don't come off the front and side and all that in training, but then they do in tournaments because they get – you know, you're trying to win. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really excited to see the the implementation of. It. I think um, Leonard's goals are very realistic. Mm -hmm. That he's not even sure if he's going to pitch it to them this year for consideration. He might wait a whole year just to see if how everybody feels about it. I think that's really good. I don't think these kind of changes should be fast. Um, as much as we get excited about them sometimes. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's I think it's an interesting step. I don't know. I think we probably are too slow to put in new rules. I mean, if you look at lots of the major sports leagues, they change crazy shit every year. And sometimes they end up changing it back. But one of the best ways to find out something works is to just do it. Yeah, so, I, I think that's kind of what he's doing, though. It's just... Yeah, this one, I mean, what's the downside? That's what I mean. There's not really a downside. Right, not that we know so far. Right. I, I, and I guess the one thing you could say is 
if a referee is looking down into the pad and they can see the elbow jump, but it didn't actually jump above the those little edges, do you call it or not? Well, you know, the only way you can mean, and the only way you can tell that is if you're parallel with the pad. Right. So is that what you're gonna have to stay at that point at all times in order to call elbow foul? So I guess that's one potential. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine that would be the f- case, but I th- I think it, I think the rule set of if you see it, it happen is still probably going to be in effect. It's just once you're down there looking at the match at that parallel level. You have that video of it you can show people? Is there somewhere? a video? Yeah. Remember you shared it last, oh, last I just, show? Oh, it was just a picture. No, it was a video because he was squishing it with his finger. And at first I thought it was like a giant piece of licorice or something. Well, hold on a second, like, fella. <laughs> yeah, look it up, man. Come on, get on the stick. Look stick, it man. up. <laughs> I like the idea of changing rules. Our rules suck. I mean, a lot of them are good, but in terms of like when it comes down to making things consistent across tournaments, they're not good. Well, that's more of we don't a, have enough automation. You need more autom- automation. Every sport has a, an amount of automation up to the limits of the individual sport, and we have zero automation in our sport. Well, like, like none. And, and but the thing is, there kind of is a a good rule set that just people just choose not to follow. No, I don't mean. I'm saying in terms of this specific aspect of the rules, oh. things that you know, like. Things that reduce um, stoppages, things that reduce stoppages, and things that make the play more consistent and more fluid. That's what I'm talking about, not the rules in general. Oh, okay, gotcha. So I mean, like you know, we don't have like automated starts. We don't have any kind of you know backup review system. We don't have you know like replays. We don't have any kind of like touch sensitive devices or s- sound. Activated. So you're saying you know? you're saying less uh, human interaction stuff. Yes, because humans are fallible, as we all know. And the more of the match relies on humans, the more opportunities there are to exploit the uh, mistakes that humans make. Whereas if you had like a sonic or a lighted start, you know, like we've talked about plenty of times in the show, we press a button under the table, and then a few seconds later, a light or a sounder both goes off that starts the match. And then so you don't have to worry about somebody jumping or somebody memorizing cadences or what have you. Yeah. Do you so, know that in uh, in track, they always review the starts, and if you move within one hundredth of a second of the gun going off, they count it as a false start because that's faster than human beings can uh, react. Oh, really? There's the pad right there. So you found it. I did. I, I've been yeah. See through the. It's a. Magic of That's what it looks like. technology. Yeah. I've shown the people what the pad looks like. The people have been educated. It's on Leonard Harkless's Facebook page. In case anybody wants to read about it. Um, but yeah, I think that's an exciting thing. I, I like that, you know. I like people pushing forward with some with ideas. Let me ask this question to people out there. How has everybody adjusted their training this year? Have you made any difference, any changes? Are you seeing differences in your results because of those changes for me i have um as you guys all know i've been really struggling with injuries in my left wrist and my right elbow and i so i ended up stopping some of the things that i were, was doing and like particularly a lot of lifting i've cut it out and instead i'm doing a huge amount of band work every day both for strength development and also for pt so i'm doing a full range of activities to support both sides of the or actually the joint all the way around 360 degrees and i'm climbing a lot more for two reasons one because it's like more of an eccentric motion compared to the concentric arm wrestling so i like doing both yeah, they're both strength development but they develop it in uh different angles so it feels like it feels rehabilitative to me and plus it's really making my hands a lot stronger and then i'm arm wrestling more so i'm doing that a lot um so basically, cut out a lot of the weights, doing a lot more arm wrestling, a lot more bands, and a lot more climbing. That's what I'm doing these days. Nice. How are you feeling with that? Is it? What have you noticed? Right now, my arms both feel stronger than they've been the last year and a half, and and I think part of that is because of my injuries are just getting better. Chris just told me to eat more kale and less sugar. I do eat kale chips once or twice a year. None of that counts. And even though I just had this bag of gummies right in front of all of you, I really actually do eat <laughs> relatively healthy. <laughs> like, I haven't had any candy week. I have no evidence week. to support this. For some but... reason, I just, I come on this show, I have this desire to eat something horrible, like gummy stress. bears, so I ate them. It's stress. But, um, 
yeah so anyway i'm not i'm doing a lot less weights and i feel i feel healthier number one and i feel like when i was doing a lot of weights although i was really strong in specific angles as a result of that i didn't feel like i was as strong in arm wrestling angles Mm -hmm. and i feel like it impacted my endurance as well because i was spending more time lifting than i was arm wrestling so i'm going back to and i'm listening you know people like crazy and and you get down. A lot of people that we've spoken to recently are like arm muscle, arm muscle, arm muscle, arm muscle, which is what I was doing the first year I went to Worlds, and I had much better results. Mm. So I'm going back to that. Cool. Oh man, my training sucks right now. <laughs> I think your training is progressing in a fantastic fashion. I mean, I mean, it still probably feels crappy to you, but you really have made a lot of progress in a relatively short period of time. No, I mean I my think. right my right hand training is fine. Um, I'm training just as much. As I always have. Um, it's just, you know, it's tough when you don't have two arms that are healthy. It just makes everything harder. I, I can touch the peg now, so I can I'm starting to work with that. I can't really put – I'm not allowed to put any pressure on it, really. Not really. Um, so I just don't. But it's, you know, it's coming along. The left is pretty much garbage still, but it won't be soon. My right arm feels great, though. I mean um, – I've really just focused on trying to be a little more versatile right-handed mm-hmm. because I've always had a good sticky hook, had a good post, but I didn't really have the same top roll ability that I had in my left hand that I did in my right. My right arm's always been way stronger, the arm. Yeah. The hand has always been an issue. I had a bunch of wrist injuries early on, and I just couldn't quite ever really get around it. Whenever I'd start training my wrist the way I always train my left, i just get hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, and for some reason, it just changed. I don't know if I just stopped thinking about it so much because, you know, not thinking about injuries usually, in my opinion anyway, for me, helps not get injured. For some reason, I think if you're thinking about them all the time, you're more bound to get injured. Um, but, you know, I feel like it's a lot more versatile than it was. It doesn't look any different, but it sure as hell works different. Mm. And because it was so long where I couldn't touch the peg at all, my core got a crazy workout. I was going home from practices with sore abs all the time. Yeah. Because you can't touch the peg. Right. So I was back on the table like a week after the surgery. But, of course, you can't touch the peg. Well, one thing I didn't also understand is that I wouldn't be able to pin anybody because I'm in my sling. And because of the, the surgery I had, I couldn't move my arm away from my body at all. And not only was I not supposed to, it just it felt terrible to tr- even – attempt it so i just well i guess well i guess i just have to hold everybody so I, my center of the table strength got very good mm-hmm. because all i could do is hold people till they burned up or they stopped pulling yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that makes sense yeah so there was probably a good six weeks where i didn't pin anybody i was training three or four days a week on the table and i didn't pin anybody ever didn't even try and it was and i never hooked because what i found out is that i put a lot of pressure on that peg when i hook and when i didn't have that pressure man it was hard to hold myself up but when I hold, when I pull back, it's not at all. When you pull back, it's your lower back that's really pushing against, and, and right. legs, and you know, but your lower back's really the one that's crunching, you know. But when you're in a hook and you're turned sideways and you're trying to support everything, it's your stomach if you don't have that arm to hold on. So I just kind of started p- peppering that in, and then all of a sudden, man, you know, I can I can touch the peg, but I feel like I used to, and I'm not putting any pressure on that peg. So I'm really excited right. when I get to actually like really go and 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 try to connect those two you know dots how it's going to feel but mm-hmm. um yeah just kind of you know because i've kind of unplugged myself from any kind of thought of competing because of the the arm um i'm glad i did i'm glad i didn't have any expectations where like, oh man after a couple months few months i'll be able to come back right-handed nope nope i can't because unless they gave me some exempt you know exemption from having to hold on to the peg because mm-hmm. there, there's a very real chance that I could just re-injure it all over again. I'm three months out. And it's still that, you know, that sensitive. So I'm really glad I, I went into this whole thing just saying I'm not competing until I'm done, until I'm, I'm ready to come back even left-handed. Mm-hmm. Because it's, yeah, it's been an interesting ride. That's for sure. Well, I don't know, man. I think a lot of people are posting on here that they've changed the way they're training. And I think it's one of the things that frustrates me about the sport is trying to figure out what the correct formula is for success. And we've been doing this show a long time, 100 episodes. I still don't know. You know? It's an interesting thing about our sport. 
you know. But some people seem to have figured it out. And I don't know. Uh oh, we put John in the sleep. He said Z Z Z Z Z. Oh, then go listen to a different podcast, Lava. Well, yeah, maybe he'll be quiet. That could be a good thing for the rest of us. I'll send you uh, the exact way that I broadcast this, and then you can do it. <laughs> and we can hear what you have to say every week. Uh, I think we should have a super match <laughs> when you're ready. Yeah? You know, when you're ready in a year. Lava versus John Brown. Oh, Jesus Christ. Lava just quit smoking. So oh, good, good. That's good. So he should... You know, he's he must, has no he must trouble be, losing he, weight now. He must be irritated. He, never... <laughs> he must be irritated. Yeah, it's probably. <laughs> We're all irritated. Tony Katowski joined the show. Is Tony going to go back to WAL with this new format? What do you think, Tony? Does anybody else have any ideas about other big names that they're going to jump right back in? I mean, I think they're going to because it's yes. money. If you put a bunch of money in front of someone's face... They're going to jump for it. I mean, what the fuck? You know, it's not like anybody has to quit their job to do it, so why not? No, yeah. Jonathan Laba just refused to have a super match with you. Okay, well, that's all right. So much for peer pressure, man. That's why he's quitting smoking. <laughs> yeah, but now that you quit smoking, you're going to be bionic in no time. Yeah, I think the whole training thing, I, I, think, it's, I think it's a lot more simple than... I think we get too far into the weeds in terms of, like, you know, the difficulties and how complicated things get and all that kind of stuff. I really do. You know, that whole training smarter, not harder thing, man, I don't know about all that. It seems like whenever somebody says that, they lose. You know what I mean? I, I, it's, mm-hmm. It just seems like I think hard. you have to train smart and hard. It just so seems there's like different ways to train hard. You can train hard in some ways and blast your elbows out. And you can train hard in other ways and not blast your elbows out. I guess. I mean, yeah, you're probably right. But, man, it just seems like the well, guy I mean, who works harder or you know. wins. If, for example, if you were to do nothing but side pressure exercise because you're like, that's it, I'm going to be as strong as Todd Hutching is side pressure, and you just went out and was like, <laughs> the whole time, you most people would break. Well, sure. Know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. And if so, all, and if I think, all, and if all I think you it's eat a legitimate sh- statement. You yeah, still, but, and if all you eat is sugar, you'll get diabetes. You know what I mean? But I don't only balance. eat sugar. I wasn't saying you. Don't so, get so defensive, Josh. You and Cobb and Gobby need to get off my case. I'm <laughs> going to go have kale chips. As soon as I'm done with this podcast, I'm going to go buy some kale. I have a nice bag um, of spinach over there that has my name on it. I love spinach, man. I don't know if you guys have had Indian food, but sag paneer is the shit. You should go have some. I haven't. You've never had Indian food? Not really, no. What the fuck, man? There's Indian restaurants in New Hampshire, and I'm sure there's some. Probably there's probably an Indian restaurant within a mile. What I want you to do: go to Indian restaurant, go in and say, "Listen, I want some vegetable pakoras, I want some naan, and I want some chicken tikka masala." And then call me up and say thank you afterwards. And that goes to everybody. Trust me. I do love it. I trust you with my life right now, and I'm not even in New Hampshire. You prick. I'm saying that's where you grew up. <laughs> that you is where I grew Indian up. Indian food there. They didn't have anything where I grew up. Let's be clear about that. There's Indian food in New Hampshire. Yeah. A lot of you like maple anyway. syrup, right? Yeah, well, who doesn't, you know? And honey, Jim Fitzsimmons was telling me, you know, you wouldn't have had a cold if you'd been eating the honey that you harvest. Because we have bees in our yard, and we get honey from them every year. But I don't like honey, so I don't eat it. Yeah. <laughs> Megan makes a mean curry, she just posted. So now we have – it's done. Well, I guess I'm having Indian food at some point, right? Yes. They can make it happen. Yep. Jonathan Laba, Coke Zero, not only has no sugar, but it is the best drink on the earth. You want to know an interesting fact about smoking? I've literally never smoked a cigarette in my entire life. I've I smoked one thing in my whole life. You may not believe this, but it's true. I was at a party once, and some guy had little Cuban cigarillos. And I was like, all right, it's Cuban. I should at least experience this once in my life to see what the big deal is about a Cuban cigar. It tasted literally like shit. I was like, why the fuck are you guys smoking this? thing tastes horrible. And it was like, it was like one of those little uh, like Clint Eastwood, man with no name cigars, you know, the super thin ones. Yeah. So I looked really cool. And I was like, I'm yeah, sure. I can see why you would smoke it just because you look cool. But it tasted awful. Like you have to force yourself to like that kind of stuff, man. Acquired taste. Josh. That's that's it's a, a what I, that means is something tastes shitty, right? But you keep eating it because people are smoking it because everyone tells you to until the point where you've you've grown accustomed to it. Yeah, right, John Lava. Peer pressure. 
peer pressure. <laughs> so what do we get over? We got over a thousand dollars now in our in our little fund, right? Which is not so. bad for a week and a half or whatever it is. Yeah. And AAA dropped in five hundred bucks, mm-hmm. which I thought was awesome. Very we're nice. still working on uh, trying to convince USAF. I think we get them close that they may do a similar contribution, and. Uh, we haven't seen any interest from Canadians supporting the USA team. Well, that's, so a, that's okay. Chris, Chris Gabi has not donated. Neither has Devin Lorette. So I don't know what the hell is going on with that. What the fuck? But we provide them with 100 episodes of free entertainment, and they can't even give a few bucks for a T-shirt for Team USA. I did feel like putting maybe if you donate a certain amount of money, you get a free subscription to the show. That's a friggin' great idea, man. I can promise to stop doing shows if you guys can, if you guys <laughs> donate enough money, that, we will not come on the air there, anymore. There we go. Now <laughs> that's something. I, now that's something I can get behind. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go back to guests. Right? And wait, Next there's week. more. <laughs> yeah, probably. Now that I just now that I just promised that we're gonna go off the air. I think Denise is a uh, Denise is watching her now, and she did promise to come on the show. So I think we just have to use some more peer pressure to get her come on next week, episode 101. And then we should, we should do we should plan out episode two hundred now because oh Jesus, we were like what should we do for episode one hundred for the last month, and then it's like hey the next one's a hundred I was gonna what are we gonna do I was gonna put a, I was gonna put like a white piece of paper with just a hundred back there on my door. We could still do that. We could, but we have time. That doesn't take a lot of time. <laughs> I to might do. be able to pasta feed. <laughs> so. Um, what was that? I was going to say something else interesting, and I lost, I lost my train of thought. God damn it. Are you going to go to um, South Bend to watch the USF Nationals? Are you going to be around? I'm going to try. I'm going to try to. Yeah. I'd, li- I'd like to go to, to you know, even just hang out. Yeah, I'd love to. Do some roughing, maybe? Yeah, I don't know about that, but definitely hang out. The last time you got a chance to rough was the uh, Tolia RVJ match. You can't let that be the last one. Was that the last time? You might be right. Yeah. You might be right. Yeah, that was bad. Mm-hmm. Should have done that. I wonder if people like <laughs> RVJ will uh, come out of the woodwork with the new WAL thing. Uh, I would, I would think so. Time will tell. Denise just said Hawthorne Nevada twelve thousand dollars in cash prizes. Yes, that's yeah, gonna be that fun. yeah, that is going to be good. That is. Are you going to that one? No. No. How long of a drive is that for you? Oh shit, long, long, long right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. basically, you're saying you're lazy. Yes, you and uh, I probably, you know, again, I'm still, I'll, I'll be fucked up still by then. Yeah, you will still. Just the way, up. just the way it is, man. <laughs> my, my goal, my goal turn. I'll say it right now. I've said it before to people, but I don't think I've said it on the show. My goal tournament to come back is the California State 2019, mm-hmm. and that's to come back and do well. I might come back and do something before that, as long <coughs> as I'm, you know, stable enough to do. Um, I don't care if I come back into a tournament and I take fifth place. That's fine. Just something, because I, I, when I come back, I'm not going to be what I was. Not at first. Um, that's fine. I just want to come back. But the 2019 California, I want to win that. So uh, I might as well put that out. Why not? Yep. Why not? Yeah, I haven't so gained. Everybody... I haven't gained a pound being, re, you know, semi-retired, which is nice. You know, I, I was a little worried about that, where you're just not as active. You know, you're just not doing what you were doing before. All of a sudden, it makes it a little, when you come back, it's a little harder to make weight. But mm-hmm. if anything, I, I lost a bit of weight at first. About where I was. Maybe we should get a top row low to come on and interrogate him about arm wrestling memes. Arm wrestling memes? Oh, you think? Oh, why? He's watching right now. So I was just, you know, some people say he's in charge of arm wrestling memes. He's oh, never right. like uh, completely denied it. Let's get him on and put him on the hot light oh. and get some uh, investigative journalism going on because we're really good at that. Yeah, I'm great at that. Tell us what you know. Go. Yeah. We could do that. We could start getting people on and, like, put them on the hot seat, man. Mm. You know, about all those controversial arm wrestling subjects. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which. Oh, boy. We should really get down to that steroid show that we've been planning for a long time. The doctors, I can't uh, can't get them nailed down. So we might have to go without a doctor and just have a pro and con argument from arm wrestlers on here. Yeah, I don't care. Let's do it. So maybe we could get our uh, Rederitas and the unnamed person who agreed to come on. Yeah, I'm I'm cool with that. I'm fine with that. Um, the details about WAL for those of you who missed it, which is a couple of you, 
It's, it's all rumors, first of all. But they're pretty prevalent rumors. People have been getting phone calls, supposedly, um, with the following basic information, that a major TV network, not sports network, has agreed to fund WAL with some unknown amount of money to produce a series of television shows that will have a super match format. And apparently they're calling, you know, some of the well-known guys and asking if they want to be involved in it. So it's going to be, you know, focus on individuals and in super matches instead of tournaments like it, had, like it was on ESPN. And again, it's not a sports network. So it's going to be aimed at like a non-sports audience to try to, I mean, like American Ninja Warrior type thing, I assume, try to get people interested in the athletes and then following the progress. And once again, it is a rumor, but I think it's probably more than a rumor based on the number of people who have been talking about it. So, yeah, should be interesting. Should be interesting to see. What's, I uh, want to see it. I want to see like a show with like I want it to be like the UFC where we have eight matches, and they're all the matchups we want to see, and we get to see what happens. And then you know a month later we get the next series. So you get to see everything you wanted to see. PAL is great, but it takes way too long between events. You know, it's like yeah. two events a year, and people get injured or whatever. Or they move on. Things happen, so they can't go. Plus, it's typically overseas you know though there have been a couple here so it's you know it would be nice if there was a continual series of arm wrestling you know arm wars style super matches that we could watch on a weekly basis for example it'd be awesome no i 100 percent agree that's definitely definitely something that needs to happen if it's going to be uh maintained as interesting to the to the an audience mm-hmm. I, th- I think i mean once a year is for an from an audience perspective how could you you know what i mean a year? You can't have you can't have an audience like that unless you're at the Olympics. That's pretty much the only or the World Cup. If you're some kind of dominant, already established sport, you can get away with broadcasting stuff very infrequently. But for this sport, it has to be on like weekly to gain an audience, like Game of Arms was doing. I mean, a million people or three million people, whatever they had a week. That's a lot of goddamn people to watch arm wrestling. Yep. You know, and it's that's the part that doesn't surprise me that there was a network willing to take a gamble on it because there is a. There is some success having already been proven for that type of format, which is, you know, make a big deal out of these guys, tell their backstory, oh, in and out of jail, grow up on the hard, long side of the tracks or whatever, and now they're arm wrestling in an abattoir with a bunch of corpses swinging around in the background, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a, TV. It's a good point. It's, a, it's kind of a plug-and-play scenario mm-hmm. we have, right? It's already been built. Why not it just is. use it? Now, one thing that'll be interesting is if this whole thing does come up where there's, you know, a lot of, I don't know, a lot, but a series, we'll say, of one-on-ones, like you're saying, how injuries will play into these kind of things. Because right now, you know, you can, you know, if you're injured, you got, you, you can take months off and then rebuild because you have once a year where it really counts or maybe even twice a year. Mm-hmm. But what about when you really have to, if you have to maintain a schedule? What if we, what if the sign, people sign contracts for four arm fights we'll say and you have to be there i wonder how many people are going to get injured how many people are going to pull out of matches all that kind of stuff the, the problems that we have with fighting today i think it's going to introduce some pretty interesting stuff i agree if and i hope they do it i hope they do it i think it'll be fun to watch maybe you and i will get on there we'll have a super match with some arch enemy of ours it'll be fun because well, I mean, honestly, what difference does it make how good the arm wrestler is as long as the match is good? I mean, you can have two people that are absolutely awful at arm wrestling, but the story is really good and everybody want to watch it. Well, we don't want them awful. We want them pretty good. They should at least <laughs> know how to arm wrestle, but I'm saying yeah. they don't have to be. I mean, when it comes down no. to it, what matters is the actual matchup. Yep. Like, you know, how many stupid UFC fights have people watched just because, you know, what, what was that kid's name? The professional wrestler. Oh, CM, CM Punk. CM Punk. Huh. I mean, he got his ass kicked, but everybody wanted to see it just because he was like, oh, that's CM Punk doing a different sport. So if you got somebody like The Rock, for example, arm wrestling some other Hulk Hogan or something like that, everybody would watch it, even though you know it's going to be bullshit. Yeah. That would add mm. credibility to the sport. 
<laughs> it wouldn't part. add any credibility. But what it would add is viewers. Oh, yeah. I would. I guarantee you that the last thing Steve Kaplan is concerned about is credibility. No way. <laughs> he wants people to watch it. I mean, that's why he owns yeah. part of his sports team. That's why he does stuff because he's trying to make money, which is fine. I think that's fine. So if you were, I mean, honestly, that's probably why he's never come on the show because he's like, why well, do I want to talk to a bunch of doofus arm wrestlers? You guys aren't the people who are going to be making. I'm going to be making money off. I may make some entry fees off you but the money is everybody who has never heard of arm wrestling and is going to watch the show that's who i want to address you know people sitting around in their pajamas in the living room that's who he wants to talk to, not us yeah that's true you know that's very true what was one regret you had in 2017 in arm wrestling my regret in 2017 in arm wrestling was the amount of weights that I lifted, which resulted in me stressing out my joints, which resulted in me getting injured, which resulted in me doing much poorly, much more poorly at Worlds than I wanted to. So that's my that's my style of training. Somebody's sending me like six messages in a row. It's disrupting my flow. Um, that's what my problem was. Yeah. I, I, the kind of training I did messed up my arm wrestling to the point where I did not succeed at Worlds like I wanted to. You felt like you took a step back in general? Yes. Even a temporary one? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a good answer. My only one, and this might surprise you, is that I didn't arm wrestle in the WAL Philadelphia tournament. Really? That's the only regret I had in 2017. Tell was, me about that. It's because Yanis Mullen showed up. Oh, yeah. That's the only reason. Yeah. Didn't know until the night before, and I went, Fuck. If I would have known, I'd have been there. That's a great point. I want, I, you know, because I, I, you know, I've always wanted to pull that guy left-handed. Always wanted to. Win or lose, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I have so much respect for that guy, and, and I love the way he pulls. I love the competitor he is. All that stuff. Um, but I didn't get a chance, and I was like, "Damn it!" He was in That's the. A good one. He's That's in the U.S. One. and he didn't get a chance. And I would have gone there, whether. You know, liking the rules, liking this, like, I don't care. I want to get my hands on that guy. And if I would have won, then great. If I would have lost, then great. I would have known. You would have known. That's all exactly. I want. That's, that's, that's my only regret of 2017. Otherwise, it was went as expected, I guess. Didn't yeah. really, I didn't really want to have to get surgery, but, you know. But I'm glad I did what I did. Mm-hmm. That's a good answer. I kind of, I think so, I, you know, I, I think I. Clown who is messaging me 65 times interrupting the show just joined is now watching the show. So I should make fun of him. It's because he happens to be good at obstacle racing. He sucks at arm wrestling, though. Oh, Although he did. He did enter one WL event. And he beat one guy. So I gotta give him credit for that. Well, fair enough. He did have a match that he won at one point. What's his name? Now I need to know. That would be John Young Pack, actually. No. Oh. Can look him up. You can spell it. Good luck with it. <laughs> Phonetically, if you're good with Korean names, you won't have any problem. With it. But anyway, I think that's a good regret. It would have been awesome to see you pull him, especially lefty, because I think that would have been a fun match. He just had super matches over in Sweden. Did you guys, did you anybody I watch did those? See, I did see yeah. a little bit. I did see a couple clips of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just always so You're impressed good. by him. I'm just always so impressed by him. Well, because he's an amazing arm wrestler. I mean, he's got techniques in every direction and power in every direction. And great endurance. He's just so dangerous. Mm-hmm. He, he's the guy who makes me nervous. You know, if, I, if he said you have to go pull Yanis, I'd be nervous. Yeah. And that's not the way it is with everybody. With most guys, I'm not nervous at all about arm wrestling. If I get mm-hmm. up there and I win, I win. If I get up there, I lose, I lose. But with Yanis, mm-hmm. it makes you nervous because there's something about going against somebody who does what you do. And you're like, well, if I'm going against people who are kind of opposite of me, even if they're stronger, whatever, I don't care. But if they, go, if they do what I do and they, didn't, they, do it to, they do it back to me better than I can, that's nerve-wracking. And See, I, actually, what you're doing right now would be perfect on a show because – like you're basically giving like a backstory, and you can imagine setting up a super match between you and Giannis on this show that we're talking about, the new WAL. This is the kind of stuff they would do, and everybody would start to get in your corner. They'd be like, "Oh, listen, this guy has been wanting to face this guy for whatever 15 years, and now he's finally going to get a chance to, and they're going to root for you." And then this other guy coming from Latvia all the way over to the United States to match up with you, and you, you could s- see how people would get into it really quickly. Yeah, you're selling my story. You got a point. I'm selling your story. You have a point. You should be on the show. But man, like you know. That kind of nerves, those kind of nerves, that kind of excitement, that kind of anxiety, that's the only reason I'm in the sport. I love that shit. I love it. So to have the chance to do that would have been great. 
If I would have known, if I would have known even a few days sooner, I probably would have shown up. I probably would have just to get yeah. my hands on that guy. Cause you know, I've really wanted to try, really wanted to try. And uh, I guess I'll have to wait a little bit longer. <laughs> 2019 is not that far away. That's not that far. It's not that far. We're almost so. through. We're almost through January, you know? We are almost through January. That's a good point. It's hard to believe that it's been three months since I got it cut open. You know, it's, it's gone. It's been too long and it's been not that long, you know? Mm-hmm. Feels the same. I think it would be a cool show to have. And when you think about like the idea of ruining the integrity of the sport, what's the first thing that everybody says to you when you tell them you arm wrestle? The very first thing. Have you seen what over the top? Oh yeah, right. And you got people drinking motor oil and acting like total clowns. That's what people remember of the sport. So but integrity. You, but the thing is, you also, you also, if you're if you're an amateur wrestler and you tell someone I wrestle, they say like WWE. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean that the amateur wrestling doesn't have integrity. I don't, you know, that whole thing of you know. I'm just saying there's already a proven formula for selling it, and the last thing that they have there is integrity. It's about characterization and excitement. Well, then you know, then that you know, you, maybe you're 100 percent right. Then maybe I don't have a place in it. I'm fine with that. I too. think you do have a place with it because there's always, if you look, you know, and all those come in. For example, Sylvester Stallone expertly acted and played character was the person who had good morals and was hardworking. He's and like a switch. The average, you know what I mean? He was you. So you are the Sylvester Stallone. Oh, Simone. Jesus Christ. Am I Lincoln Hawk in this scenario? <laughs> You're Lincoln Hawk. The Hawk show is WWE. over, guys. Thank you so much for 100 shows. <laughs> <laughs> We've reached the end. There's always a, <laughs> there's always a point. Lori Cole is saying that he did drink motor oil before. Over the I believe it. Bruce Way. I was out of his mind. Bruce Way. So, yeah. Gentleman. Very nice man. He did prove that you can drink motor oil and not instantly die, though. So those he did stuff. have Alka-Seltzer, though, in the movie. <laughs> I remember that. Which I'm guessing was a was a plug. <laughs> Finally, Jonathan, somebody noticed. That was like the sixth time he walked by and nobody said a word. That stupid thing? What thing? I don't know. Whatever that is. Action figure. <laughs> you complain about some tr- idiot messaging you six times, you're sitting there going like this. <laughs> I just want to see if anybody was going to notice. I was trying to check to see if you guys were paying attention. So somebody was. At least one person was paying attention. All right. Dude. Anyway. So I think that I think it'll be fun to watch. I think it'll be successful, and I'm actually excited about it. I'm excited about all of it. I want to see what happens, man. It'd be nice to see everything succeed and, you know, USAF have the biggest year. That's the one thing I don't like about the, you know, Travis thing and the WAL coming back is, like, the events that really should be pushed, the ones that lead to the world championships are, are going to be sidetracked again, which I hate. Yeah, well. So that, that is the way it goes, pal. It's one or the other right now. It really is. And the only way it's not is if one of these leagues says we're going to use that as a, as a recruiting. Now, why don't they? I mean, what's wrong with that? The world championships is the world championships. You know, that's something that you can sell right off the bat. And it already exists. You can't show it live. But 90% of the stuff we watch on TV isn't live. So I don't see what the problem is. As long as the results aren't out, you can show, you know, yeah. Whatever highlights and it'll be just as good. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's that's a whole that's that's a backroom question in terms of you know, why don't you do this? Why don't I don't know? I what just, room I, are we in? Huh? What room are we in? You mean there's a room behind us even? Oh yeah, thought, yeah. There's a room. I thought we were the end of the line. There's a, we there's a room the way below me. In, there's a room way lower. <laughs> in terms of a meteor <laughs> empire, we occupy the closet in the janitor's room. Oh, media know? wise. Oh God. Jesus. <laughs> Let's not insult. Let's not insult the janitors of the world of the media room. So I was trying to talk to uh, Ivan Marishenko today. Try to get him to come on the show, and uh, if he he's gonna he's worried about his English, but he wants to come on. So that'd be cool to see him. Mm-hmm. And Giannis did say he was come on. It'd be fun to have him come on. It Maybe would be. You guys can fun. do like a verbal super match right here. Oh yeah, because that's what I'd probably do. <laughs> you might be able to win in an English English contest. I I would bet on you for sure. Oh thanks, Josh. I think you would take that yeah. handily. Mm. I mean, you don't know what Hoy Poloi is, but I think in general you're better than Giannis. You'd have to get, you'd to have to have your boys back though. If I pull them, if I pull them, you back. You'd have to. Are you kidding me? Come on, come I'm on. Here for you, man. Even I'm here just for you, even just brother. underdog. Why? Because <laughs> let's be real. 
<laughs> It'd be a gazillion to one underdog. Doesn't mean I don't think I have a chance, though. I was an underdog in all three. I had three super matches in a year. I was an underdog in every one of them. Mm-hmm. Who gives a who gives a care? That's what I say. Yeah, but we, I don't think you were the underdog versus. I didn't. Let me think about that. Versus Maybe. who? Everybody thought I was going to lose against Chris. Most people thought I was going to lose against Oren. And then most people thought I was going to lose against Ron. Vision's the only one that said I was going to beat Ron because he's like, oh, fuck it. The last I two, last I two times I was wrong. I three of those matches. If memory serves, I think I publicly picked you in all three You didn't of publicly those. pick anything about me and Oren because it was your tournament, which was smart. Oh, yeah, that's right. Did I not publicly pick you? <laughs> you just publicly didn't pick anybody. Yeah, well, that was smart. That me. was smart. You were very neutral. <laughs> you picked me up from the airport, though, so I guess I did. You, you were supporting me. Let's be honest. Yeah, I was. Well, I supported both. You guys are both my boys. Yeah. It's tough when you have two people you really like are arm wrestling yeah, each other. It is. You know? Yeah, you just hope for a good match. All I can say is I haven't ever lost money on you. Oh, that's good. I haven't won any money on you either. To be well, clear. that's not that's not good, but that's you know. <laughs> Uh, all right, what else are we talking about? Do we have anything else we need to talk about today? I don't think so. I don't think I do. Jesus Christ, it's been on for an hour and ten minutes already, and there's people still watching. You guys are awesome, man. This is a hundred episodes of this. I don't even know what we're talking about. But we're going to go back to guests next week. I'm going to try to get Denise on here because she did say she was going to come on, but we have to just talk to her, talk her into it. And then we got, uh, yeah, let's work on Giannis and Ivan, and we got a bunch of people who uh, sent in some suggestions, people they want to see. And we're going to do the steroid show. Soon. In fact, I'm going to message somebody as soon as we're done about that because that one needs to happen. I was just reading something about steroids and heart disease. Um, no way. Is there like a. a that's the thing about steroids. Is there just not too many? Well, maybe there is. I mean, I haven't done the research myself, but it seems like there's not a lot of long term stuff done on it. You know, that's where it's tough. Mm-hmm. But. Well, as every year goes by, there'll be more. True. Because there's, there's a lot of studies that are in. That are in progress, but the oh, results are not yet. Gotcha. So. That makes sense. All right. I ate all my gummies. I drank all my Coke. We said everything we had to say. Oh, we'll there's be back a, next week. There's and, a question. Uh, there's a question for me. Does uh-oh. John have a really? decent chance at winning Beijing Super Series? I am mostly not competing for most of the rest of the year, so I have zero percent chance of winning that. I don't uh, see that question. Super Series. It says it right there. From Dalton. Ah, I see. Oh, Ron Bath is watching tonight, too. We need to get him on the show, man. I know we've reached out to him a couple of times. Ron would be a great guest. Come on. We are just watching Whenever that you match feel between like Ron and... Um, Bill Brzezink. Bill Brzezink, which is an amazing Oh, match. yeah, I saw that, too. Somebody liked it. It was like a few years old. Man, Bill Brzezink was an animal. Most people don't even know who that is. It's John's brother. Yeah. If it wasn't for John and Johnny Walker, maybe remembered as the best 198-pound guy out there. Yeah, that good... good. That good. It was amazing. Really good arm wrestler. Really, like, you know, you look at him set up, you look way he's built, look way he pulls. It's basically John. It's just like 3% stronger, or 3% weaker. So when John mm-hmm. came down to 98s, he'd win. Mm-hmm. And then Johnny Walker for so long was just so damn good. Right. That, uh, but even then, you know, Bill ended up beating Johnny Walker. Mm-hmm. But, you know, in terms of the best, you know, legends of all time, dude, Bill Brzezink. If John couldn't make 98s and there was no Johnny Walker, we'd all be saying Bill Brzezink. That good. It's a good point. Yeah, I mean, there's a few people like him and Ron Bath we have on the show that we would literally have on any week because there's so many questions we have for them. It's a question of talking them into – I don't blame them. I mean, there's a lot of better ways to spend an hour of your time than talking to the two of us. But, you know, I'm going to keep working on them. So, Ron, if you're still watching, man, throw us a little bit of love. Come on next week and week after – Come on with Denise if you want, and uh, we'll have some fun. Yeah, anytime, Ron. Let's That's do all it. I have to say for today. Cool. We we done? I guess we're done. All right. And Christian Binney, we'd like to get him on too. I would love to have Christian Binney on. My good friend Christian Binney. I love yeah, that guy. I'd on. love to have him on. Reach out, reach out to him. Man. I know, I do, ha- I do have to. Yeah, I do have yeah. to. Because Meg- Megan told me to, too. And I'm like, you, you, that's a 100% great idea. Yeah, we got to get him on. My lazy ass hasn't done it yet, but 100%. <laughs> I have to get him on. I love that guy. We can, he can tell me, he can, he can, he can, uh, what do you call it? He, he can deny the story of him telling Tim Bresden on the phone to leave me at a gas station on the way down to South Carolina. 
Uh, I know he said it for real because <laughs> Timmy put the phone on speaker. Um, but then he loved me by the end of the trip. It was a good trip. <laughs> it was me. It was me, Tim Bresnan, Christian Binney, Bob Sawick, and, and Corey Bresnan. In the car. Oh my God. I would pay money to have a video of for that car. 20 ride. hours each way. That's incredible. Yeah, my 20 first, hours. My in first the car. nationals. My first nationals in 2009. I won the novice class. That's amazing. Class. I won man. the novice class. I had to cut to 176. Bob Sawick had to cut to 198. It was a different time. It was a different time. Ron Bath just put in a, an arm wrestling meme as a response to coming on the show. So maybe we're almost having talked into coming on the oh, show. Cool. Anytime, Ron. So, You're welcome whenever you want. Yeah, Ron is welcome here anytime he wants. Um, so, all right, guys. All right, fools. Great night. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much for tuning in. Episode 100. We'll see you next week. Bye. Adios.